Our first storyteller this evening is Richard Cardillo. Come on! foot of my bed, ready to pray the prayer to the guardian angel, which I've done every night and every morning since I was three years old. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. Amen. When I was about eight or nine, I asked my mom, what does that line mean, to whom God's love commits me here? She said, oh, darling, that's God's love is what makes it possible for the guardian angel to fly to you, and they'll deliver you from any problems in your life. So ask them for delivery. And I figured I could start that. So I would pray, you know, guardian angel and God's love, please deliver me from Sister Mary St. John screaming at me because I didn't do my homework <laughs> again. Or I'd, you know, pray God's love and my guardian angel, please deliver me from the other guys making fun of me on the playground every day. But by the time I was about 11 or 12, my prayer and special favor was always the same. Guardian angel and God's love, please deliver me from this feeling I have about other boys. And I knew I was sinning, and I couldn't live with that. And I prayed every night, and that prayer wasn't being heard. By the time I reached my teens, I was desperate, so I figured this called for desperate measures. And at the age of 16, I made this profound decision to give my life to Jesus Christ and take a vow of celibacy for the rest of my life. Because doesn't every 16-year-old know what they want to do with their penis for the rest of their lives? <laughs> I gave it a go. I gave it a good shot. I was trying. I figured I'd be so fervent. I was more fervent than any zealot around. I was going to make it work. It just wasn't working. I couldn't get rid of this feeling inside that I wasn't living an authentic life. And 14 years into it, I finally had to bag it. And I said, I will write to the Vatican for a dispensation of my vows, and I will leave and live as an openly gay man. Now, I tell a lot of stories about that, and I joke about it, but the reality is when I think about that time, I was angry. I was livid. I was so mad at my guardian angel and God's love. You didn't deliver me from Jack. You let me fall into this. You let me waste my youth. You had me have a misspent youth. And I was so angry. And I reacted in an angry way. I promised myself I was going to be out and loud. I was going to have my coming out be really brash, really bold. I joined every gay club, every gay organization I could. And I started making gay friends, lots of gay friends. I made dozens and dozens of gay friends. And then they started dying. And dying. And dying. It was a nightmare. Um, there's a book and a wonderful documentary that came out a couple of years ago called How to Survive a Plague. And that's the only way to talk about the AIDS epidemic and crisis that was going on at that time. We were surviving a plague. There was no way to get around it. We were just trying to survive and help other people. I realized there were escape things that I could do. Like I stopped counting the number of memorial services I went to once I reached 50. I just wouldn't do it anymore. I had to do something to turn this around, and I wasn't quite sure. So I figured, why don't you volunteer somewhere? And I started volunteering at a nonprofit, non-sectarian agency right here in New York City that prepared and delivered hot meals to homebound people with AIDS. And that's when I found real life guardian angels. It felt so good to be part of something. And I knew that this was going to be part of my salvation and get my spirituality back. I knew that this was saving me from anything that was gonna be problematic in, in my life as well. And I realized that I had to do something even more drastic, and I was so taken with this, um, with this volunteer organization, I wanted to work there full time. So I left my teaching job, I applied for a job there, and I got it. I got it. 
So I figured I can work in this agency. The name of that agency? Well, there are no coincidences in life. I was, for nine years, the director of client services at the wonderful New York institution of God's love we deliver. That's when I learned, thank you. That's when I learned about guardian angels and God's love we deliver. And every day as a director of client service, when I picked up that phone, I felt so great that that client was going to be delivered a meal the very next day. These people who were rejected by their family, their friends, their church, their government, knew that they could come to us. And I finally felt large, a bigger and a part of something much larger than me. And that kind of turned things around for me. I'm, um, I'm really proud that God's Love We Deliver has expanded its mission because you can't cut down God's love. And now they prepare and deliver nutritious meals for people with any debilitating disease or illness that they can't cook or uh, prepare food for themselves. Uh, so they've even grown. I look at myself. I'm a 58-year-old gay male living in New York City who's HIV negative. I am an anomaly. I'm a rarity. I've lost the best and the brightest in my generation to AIDS. And I know there's only one reason that that kept me alive. And as much as I complained about being in the religious life, I know that from the ages, from the years 1976 to the year 1990, the height of the AIDS epidemic, I was sexually inactive. I was celibate. So I could complain all I want, but there was some force keeping me safe, ever that day being on my side to light, to guard, to rule, to guide. I know I was saved for a reason. Maybe there are guardian angels. Thank you. <laughs>